So follow on from yesterday's volatility, the US dollar has continued to sink towards that all important trend line that I had been talking about yesterday, which has enabled the euro uh, to regain parity, as I said, it most likely would in yesterday's report, which has created that W formation that I'd highlighted, having broken out that <clears throat> symmetrical, symmetrical, symmetrical triangle which I had also highlighted. Additionally, the Aussie dollar, as I pointed out in yesterday's breaking news with regards to the CPI beating estimates, I drew up the prospects for <clears throat> a move higher from support of around uh, 63, the upper, 63.70, the upper quarter of the 63 handle. Um, it had that spike and um, I suggest it would come down and move back up. That is exactly what has happened. So the Aussie is a little bit higher today. Um, essentially, the data that we have for today um, is going to be the Bank of Canada, really, is what uh, the market's anticipating. Um, we've got here the FX Street calendar, and it's suggesting here that the greenback has come under uh, further pressure, struggling to rebound early on Wednesday, stays below 111 despite risk averse mood as falling US stock index futures show. Uh, touching back on the, the euro, so uh, this is a reversion pattern. So if we clean this up, you've got this W formation. And interestingly enough, it is formed uh right ahead of the um ecb now that's significant because um so the euro has basically dropped um after the last five rate decisions so this means that any post ecb rally might not last, especially considering the um, surge that we've seen over the last week, this this week, um, and given the dire uh, growth scenario, uh, you've got Eurozone recession worries, um, and this also will come ahead of next week's Fed. So, um, the market tends to like to push the barriers. I mean, we do have the last month's highs as a target here uh, towards 1.02, but I'd be wary about anything above that. Um, I mean, for the immediate future, I mean, the US session is already eating into longs uh, of London <clears throat> down to the upper quarter of the 99 handle. It looks like the there are prospects for that. We've had one, two, two sessions of rise so far on the day. This is the third day of higher highs. So we're eating into that below, below 99.50. You've got all this space down to back to 98.50. Having said that, we're still on the front side of this trend line, so we could easily see a move back up. But the uh, the 15 minutes charts uh, price action is is definitely pretty toppy. It's M formation, a move back into the peak with an engulfment, a further move up, which failed. Another M formation, another engulfment, and I moved down. So my best bet is that we'll we'll stick around the the upper quarter of the 99 handle and parity as we head over to the ECB. And today will be a sort of a, a zero day, really. Now moving over to the Canadian dollar which is the event for the day.
we are currently a little bit underwater here with dollar weakness. We've got this W formation playing out, however, with 36 on the radar as we head towards the meeting. So we're looking for some stability in the US dollar ahead of the meeting. And on the downside, 135. So we're in that sort of 100 pip box and we're heading towards the middle of it. Um, <clears throat> this is TD Securities talking about the event coming up. They're looking for Bank of Canada to lift rates by 75 basis points due to stubbornly broad and persistent underlying inflation uh, with a further 25 basis points in December. <clears throat> However, they're talking about a weaker Canadian dollar. They're talking about the higher the rates go, the greater downside macro shock and the more the CAD needs to reflect it. So they're talking about 140 into year end. So that's quite a bit from where we are at the moment. Um, the dollar's going to have to recover somewhat, but that does play into the M formation we're seeing on the Dixie for a, uh, a reversion back into the neckline we talked about. Moving back up <clears throat> towards the weekly neckline of the Dixie. We've got some downside to go yet until we really test that trend line again. And we're seeing that being reflected in the Canadian dollar also. Um, again, with the M formation there on the weekly chart. So looking for some stability. We talked about being the 100 pip box, maybe the upper quarter of 134 on the downside. And looking at gold, we talked about the price moving a touch higher into the sort of target zone for the Fed, and we've, we've started to see that already. Um, I'll take you back to the article that you can find on FX Street by just putting in this title here, or putting in my name and searching gold. You'll find it in the news section. Uh, this was the schematic with the head and shoulders getting on the backside of this trend line. There's the dominant trend line that we're all in the backside of. We broke that structure over here, we pushed up, we come back in to, to test the uh, support of the the lows here, the inverse head and shoulders, and last week's, uh, last week and last month's lows. So we're sort of seeing this, this move up. We've got those inside bars, um, which uh, we're seeing now, starting to see a, a move out of this sort of consolidation phase into resistance into the Fed next next week and depending on the outcome, but then you've got this move up in towards last month's highs for a 200% measured move of the current range. So we're still within that range thereabouts, but we're, we're trying to move up into the area of interest. So we've had a, seen a higher high today, 1675, breaking, Breaking structure, we've got this box that we're still in. It's starting to extend a little bit so we can move it out. So there's probably still some upside to go given the the, uh, the trend line that we looked at again in the DXY. Pull that up again for you. So down at support, the old lows. Let's get that in properly. It's 
I mean, I'm a broker, but 110.05 the figure. We've had a little dip below it today, 109.90 ish. So there are prospects of a continuation. Dollar yen is to move a little bit lower, I would say, into last week's lows and beyond, last, last month's lows. We've got the M formation forming, so it needs to come down a bit more. Cable moving up a little bit into this trend line. We've got uh, prospects here of a continuation in the, on the back side of the trend line if it can break that. But depending on the central bank outcomes, the Bank of England and Fed next week. But again, we've got this W formation here, so maybe it's going to start to tire a little bit before it can break. But for the for the open, I think we've got to be negative. Nasdaq's already dropped over 2%, SPX here is lower. Futures. So uh, let's see how we get on there. All right, so that's it for today.